dear Father in Heaven, thank you for this opportunity to share this uh, information, this prophecy. Please uh, be with us and guide us. Give me uh, the words to speak and help us to understand these things that you are uh, revealing to us. Give us uh, clear minds and bless us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit to understand these things and work on our hearts and help us to accept the truth, whatever it uh, might be. We ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are now going to go through this study. You all have uh, the notes. You, you should look at the, the first number. Um, at this moment it's 5.4 and there will be maybe some changes made to this uh, document. But you can recognize this by, by the first number uh, if you have the latest uh, version. So we are now going to uh, study f uh, version 5.4. We just go s slowly through this uh, document and if there are any questions you can ask, of course. Uh, I can post it, but it's, uh, it's a group effort. Myself, Theodore and uh, Stephen. Uh, in, in a sort of uh, easy to understand fashion. I thought it would be really self-explaining uh, for people to uh, understand it. But nevertheless, uh, Jeff asked me to explain it anyway. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Uh, and see if we can understand what is in here. Yes. It would be beneficial if anyone has questions along the way that you interrupt them with questions because you're probably going to be <coughs> voicing questions that people that are watching would have too. Yes. So, by all means, uh, don't hesitate to uh, ask questions. Just start from uh, page two, introduction. Uh, I'll just read it. Uh, this study uh, looks into the possibility if an Islamic attack on the United States of America has been foretold by the Lord to take place on July 18, 2020, <coughs> as part of the Minat Kwai, and thereby heralding its darkest hour. Uh, in search for the events that would transpire during the waymarks of midnight and uh, midnight cry. It was discovered in 2018, as Jeff already explained, that November 9, 2019 was to be the start of midnight and was also to be the close of probation for the priest. At the same time, Theodore Turner started to discover the significance of July 18, 2020 as a waymark connected to the midnight cry and from then on, others became involved, that, that is me, uh, myself and uh, Stephen, and in a corporate effort contributed to this study. Uh, from several different perspectives, July 18, 2020 kept showing up on the lines in connection with Islam and the Midnight Cry. And as the study progressed, not only became the nature of the attack apparent, but possibly also the intended target of the, of the attack within the United States. Uh, the methods, this, uh, the line upon line methods and techniques used in this study are mainly based upon numerical patterns, chiasms and calendars, which are not new, but have already been utilized many times in the movement to make application and gain further insights. And for those unfamiliar with these te techniques, a brief explanation on the methods used will first be given before focusing on the actual study that starts on page uh, 11. Uh, any questions so far? No? Mm -hmm. uh, go to the next page. Page 3. It's called the uh, Palmonai. I'm not going to let you read this whole thing, you realize. Yeah, I have to. <laughs> 
make it clear. Yeah, exactly. With our uh, draw this line on the board, I have to wipe it first. Uh, but we'll look at the first uh, line, the, the 2520, that you all know, that we should all be familiar with. the oh, this one doesn't work really well we have the <coughs> two twelve sixties that we know uh, starting in seven twenty three BC ending in 1798, and the, the exact uh, middle point is 538 AD. Uh, it's divided in uh, two equal periods of 1260 years, and <coughs> yeah, we see 1260 years of. Uh, Pagan persecution and then 1260 years of papal persecution. So this is pagan, this is papal. We all know this line. And we can compare this with the uh, week of Christ, parallel this with week of Christ, which we can also divide in uh, two periods of 1260. This is all uh, uh, familiar ground. We should all know this. Only year we are talking uh, about years, uh, right? And here we are talking uh, about days. We see here the, the baptism of Christ. AD. We see here the crucifixion. Mm. 31 AD, and we see the stoning of Stephen in 34 AD. So this is a very simple uh, chiasm, uh, yeah, showing that the Lord works with, with numbers, with patterns, with symmetry. Can we see that? Is this uh, is it? Yes, well, yeah, pretty straightforward. This is your justification for, for using years and days chiastically in this study. Part of it is not, it's not yeah, you see the, yeah, the day of principle, you mean? I'm just saying you, you're seeing these equalities on both sides. You see it with years, you see it with days, and yeah. that's what's justifying you to... Yeah, and you see 1260 uh, can be a symbol... Uh, be it years or days, you see just the number 1260 and uh, you can compare it with each other and see if you can gain any more information uh, from it. So this is just very basic. Uh, but you're also trying to make a case that use identifying and applying chiasms is valid. Yeah. Because in these lines that we're dealing with, we have chiasms 63, 63, and some exactly. of the other ones. Yeah. So it's not simply the year day, it's also that he's wanting you to know that chiasms are a valid symbol in prophecy. Right. No, because his notes are saying that he, this is one of his main methods chiasms, calendars, and numerical patterns. Yeah. And he's basing that method off of this is your. This is just one, one example. Okay. Uh, and it's an important exa example because Christ 
is in the center of this chiasm. And you, you can say that in all chiasms, points to this main chiasm where Christ is in the center. Uh, so, uh, having said that, uh, we can look at a few examples that you see below uh, the last line, the, the second line. We will uh, go to, to, some, to some examples in the Bible where we see uh, that the Lord's, Lord is using numbers in a, in a yeah, in a symbolic, symbolical way for us to uh, discover. Uh, most, e most, yeah, pretty easy one is the Revelation 12, 6. We can read it. Um, maybe someone can read it. In the and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Yeah, so a thousand two hundred and, th and three score days is uh, how much? Sixty years. Sixty, right? Day for a year. Amen. And this is in chapter 12, verse 6. And if you look at the chapter and first number and you put them together, you see one, two, six. So, could be a coincidence, but if this happens over and over again, then it's probably not a coincidence. And like I've heard many times, people say there, there are no coincidences in God's word. Uh, and we will see that this is purposeful. And the Lord is trying to int introduce us to uh, pay attention to these things to dig for these things that we gain uh, more information. Yes? One of the ways that God speaks to us is through his providence. Right. He's speaking through us through all of these providential years, uh, the time it took for the Bible, the King James Bible to be uh, translated you know, seven years, 2,520 years, that's the voice of providence speaking right. to us. Right. Should I write it on, on the board, Revelation 12.6, or let people, people read it from the document? Documents fine. They're attached. attaching this document, I'm yeah. sure, to the, the live stream. So. Okay. Uh, another, another example is Psalm 12.6. Can we read this? Can somebody read this? Psalm 12, 6. Psalm 12, 6. Psalm 12, 6, okay. That's the word of the Lord's are pure words and silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Right. So here we see the word um, seven times mentioned, which is the 2520. Symbolizes the 2520. Uh, we know the 126 is a symbol of the 2520. <coughs> that we know from uh, Daniel five. yeah Daniel 5 uh, and it's again in Psalms 12 uh, verse 6 so again we see uh, 1 to 6 Uh, we don't have to go to Daniel 5.25, I think. We know the we know this first. The many, many tackle you for sin. <coughs> Should I explain the many, many tackle, what, what it uh, means? Okay, you can do it. Do it. You got to assume the people watching live stream that there's some that are are very new. New, yeah. So I... Then, then we have to go to Daniel 5 first and read, uh, read this passage. Daniel 
525. I'll do it just uh, quickly. And it says, and this is the writing that was written many, many Teko Yufarsin. <coughs> we know this is the moment when Dosha Sar is drinking uh, Babylonian wine in the cups that were taken from the Temple of Jerusalem. Um, the, the hand comes and writes on the wall many, many Teko Yufarsin. And Daniel comes to interpret it. And the meaning of many, many Teko Yufarsin is uh, as follows. Uh, many. Uh, is in fact a, you can, a currency, can you say it like that? Yeah. Is uh, equal to 25, no, sorry, 50 shekel. And we have too many, so two times 50. We have the, the teko, which is one shekel. And we have the Eupharsin, which is half a teko, so it should be 25, which adds up to 126. Uh, Shekel. Shekel, yeah, shekels. And if you convert them to the, to the gera, A shekel is uh, 20 gera. Uh, a shekel is 20 gera. Then you have to multiply shekels by 20. And you get 25, 20. Um, Is this uh, clear? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. But what you're dealing with is biblical passages that are marking 126. Yes. And identifying that that's God's providence. Yes. That we see that the Lord if uses uh, chapter numbers and first numbers to make things uh, clear to us, we're going to see uh, more of this in, uh, later in the study. But just that the Lord is using numbers in in a way that we, yeah, uh, n never uh, anticipated. But He's now opening up these ways for us to gain more information. Uh, Emphasizing the use of numbers. That's why he's called Pamonai, a wonderful number, a number of secrets. And we see that uh, all over the, the scriptures, in, in, in many, many ways, he is using numbers and patterns and symmetry and chiasms, you name it. Where is he called Pamonai? Why? Where? Uh, he's called Pamona in, the, in Daniel 8.13. And what's Daniel 8.13? Maybe we can read it. It's uh, trying to lead you to a point. It's about the the twenty-five twenty effect. Well, and let it me throw something in here. Daniel eight thirty thirteen is a question. Daniel eight fourteen is the answer. Yeah. But Sister White says Daniel eight fourteen is the foundation and central pillar of Adventism. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you're thinking about being a Seventh Day Adventist and you're considering whether God really uses numbers to speak to us, it's important to notice that Palmoni, the wonderful number, is right there in the foundation and central pillar Amen. of Adventism. 
Because the answer of verse 14 cannot be separated from the question of verse 13. Right. Amen. So, um, yeah, you can go to Daniel 8, verse 13 and 14. And somebody read first thirty. One saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? Yeah. So the part where it says that certain is um, the word pomoni. I have to look up which uh, it's Hebrew six four two two. Oh, oh, nine. H six. Hebrew six four two two. Yes? So just so far, what you're saying is to get to the dates that you're going to show in here, that you're saying that chiasms are what you're using, that you're accepting the divine inspiration of texts and verses? Uh, amongst. No, so far. I mean, this is your method, or <coughs> this is how you're going to come to your conclusion, right? N not solely based on. Uh Bible verses, or I mean, uh, chapter numbers, or verse numbers. Uh, part, do you accept that those are divinely inspired? Yeah, that's uh, what I'm trying to convey. Yeah, that the chapter and verse numbers are inspired. All of them? Mm, I, I not Yeah, how do you say? <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, it's not by definition. The beginning to the end is inspired. Yeah, there's your answer. <laughs> so, all of them, if I go through and look for chapter 11 and verse 9, even though I don't understand all the 11 nines in the Bible, it's going to have an application. One way or another. It's inspired. Well, if we're going to study the Bible through eternity, there may be far more numbers than we recognize before the second coming that we're going to recognize after. So, I'm mm -hmm. not saying we'll be able to explain them all now, or even the majority of them. Yeah. But... Even when he's taking in verse 6, that means that they had to mark the first five verses just to get to verse 6. So the first five verses have to be there for the purpose of making a 6. What's the definition of Palmoni? Yeah, the says here on top of page 3, it means the, the wonderful number or the number of secrets. The number of secrets. Mm -hmm. And what does Deuteronomy 25.25 25 say? Is it Deuteronomy 25.25? 25? I, <laughs> I hope so. We're hijacking Odilio's presentation here. That's okay. Okay. The secret things belong to us and our children forever. That's what he's revealed. The secret things belong unto God, but the things which he has revealed belong to us and our children forever. And to, to add to that, uh, a secret in, in Daniel is, uh, in fact, a, a, a prophecy for vision. Uh, so, right. but it's also numbers. Yeah. And nobody knows that verse. I don't have my computer with me. The secret things belong unto God, but that's what is revealed belong to us. Uh, 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 twenty-nine, twenty-nine. Twenty-nine, twenty-nine. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I'll read it because I'm the one that's getting you off course. Okay. Deuteronomy twenty-nine, twenty-nine. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. The wonderful number is the number of secrets. Amen. And if he reveals them to us, 
they belong to us and our children forever. Amen. Yeah. And that double, that you're going to start taking inspiration. Yeah, th that's why I said 25, 25. I, I knew it was a double. 30, 29 comes before 30, which is when the priests are finished. Okay. I'm just saying that they're going to take that tactic then. Okay. 29, 29. Yeah. So we're just looking at another example. <coughs> I hope this is clear. Yep. We look at Revel Revelation 14, 4, verse 4. So it says, uh, if you're all there, mm -hmm. these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from, from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. So who is this talking about? 144,000, right? And what is the chapter number, first number? Yeah, 14. 14 verse 4. Amen. So slowly the Lord is guiding us, uh, bringing our attention to this possible uh, uh, use of chapter and verse numbers uh, and numbers in, in, in His Word. Uh, we see this in a, in a more... Uh, do you, how do you say, more obvious, profound, profound way in the next uh, passage in Matthew 16, verse 18. And you can read it if, uh, if you like. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Right. Um, so you can say, it's talking about the foundation of the church, and in the end time, uh, what is the foundation of uh, God's church in the end time? The 144,000, right? And if you look at the name Peter, if you take the, the word value of Peter, I'll, uh, I'll write it down. It's 16, this P is the 16th letter of the alphabet, of course. Uh, e is five, the fifth letter of the alphabet. T, the 20th letter, E again the fifth, and R, the 18th letter of the alphabet. If you multiply these uh, letters, you come to the number uh, 144,000. Exactly. So yeah, this is a uh, yeah very yeah again profound. I think uh, I, I I cannot see this as as coincidence. I, I don't know if you guys see it differently. Amazing. It's amazing to say the least. Yeah. That, you know, recorded in Greek, yeah. gets translated, and now here in the King James Version, our day and age, that works. Yeah. But where's he at geographically? In Panium. Pan Panium. Uh, Panium. Yeah. Right. It's Caesarea Philippi. It's Panium. Yeah. yeah. So it's placing the 144,000 yeah. at Panium, the midnight cry. Yeah. Amen. And yeah, people ask why is it only in English uh, does it add up to 144,000? 
why not in, in Dutch or in Chin Chinese or in Hebrew or Greek? But I think it's because of the, that the King James Version is the only sanctified Bible, if you can say it like that. So, so he was at uh, Galilee at the same time, right? He was in Galilee, yeah. a town, well, I'm sorry, Mag Magdala, which is a town in Galilee, meaning the top, well, no, that's not where I wanted to be. It's, he was in Galilee, yeah, which is a turning point. So, Pentium would be a turning point. Crisis in Galilee? Yeah. <clears throat> um, Matthew 16, 18 is a, if you, if you know the mathem mathematical yeah. re ratio for the Fibonacci, Fibonacci mm -hmm. number, mm -hmm. it's uh, 1.618. Okay, you need to use the microphone. He does. You, do, you have to use the microphone. Okay. The Americans have the right bold voices. I thought I was speaking loud. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so the, the Fibonacci sequence you mean is uh, one starts with one six one eight. It's yeah, it's yeah. one point six. Six one, one eight. eight. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. What is that? The Fibonacci there's a microphone so you can explain it. I don't know what <coughs> it is. Fibonacci. It's a mathematical number um, that you find in nature. That it, um, it's like a sequence. And uh, if you have, it starts off with 1 plus 1 um, equals 2, plus 1 equals 3, plus 2 equals 5, plus 3 equals 8, plus 5 equals 13. It, there's a, um, it's, um, and it, you see us here like in, in the nature and sun, sunflower seeds and with... Um, like, like the snow? The snail was the the house of the snail, you know the yeah, and the not nautilus shell. Yeah. Nautilus shell is uh, has this here. If you uh, Google it, you'll find. Uh, is it called the golden ratio? Mm -hmm. It's called the go golden ratio. Yes. And you know how? Is it circular? Yeah. You can. No, it's uh, distance. Okay. Yes. It's, just, it's linear. But, but like you said, also the circular it is. Yes. It's the, the same sequence. Same sequence to your, 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 the bones in your arm, your, your finger, to your, your elbow, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's all that. Yeah. It's sort of a... It's a the solar <coughs> system. The solar system, From yeah. the sun to the yeah. first planet, second planet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you heard of pi r squared. Yeah. These different mathematical numbers have... They, pi is, a, a, I guess, a, a Latin word for that particular number. And the Latin word for this one you're talking about mm -hmm. is phi. Mm -hmm. And Philip is that Caesarea Philippi. And Philippi... Peter? Yeah, Peter is that Caesarea Philippi. And Philippi, the, the root word is phi, which is 16, 18. There's so much in this chapter, but it's all at Paneum. <laughs> And also the first letter P. So we see Matthew 16, verse 18, emphasizing the first letter of Peter and the last letter of Peter, the P and the R. Perhaps referring to Christ being the first and the last, mm. Alpha and Omega. First, you seeing it? Yeah. It's that chapter in verse, I mean. So we go to the next page, page four. <coughs> this is a uh, often used verse. We can read it. D Deuteronomy eighteen eighteen. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. We know this verse, right? Uh, we use it to identify Miller, William Miller, uh, finishing his study in 1818. He's the prophet that is raised up for the Millerites, for us. 
So again, the chapter and first number are referring to the very year that Willie Miller is uh, finishing his study. So that's an easy one. Uh, next is John 2.20. Should also be familiar. You can read it. Can anyone read John 2.20? The Jews, forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? Right. So you see, um, some interesting numbers here. Uh, first to number forty-six. Uh, The, lit the little temple in Jerusalem took 46 years to build, or to, to yeah, like it says here, to, to build. Uh, the spiritual temple that started in 1798 was finished in 1844, which is a period of 46 years. So, which is Symbolically referred to uh, in this verse. Also, Moses was 46 days on the mountain when he received the Ten Commandments. And the blueprint of the temple, the tabernacle. Right? Mm -hmm. And also, the human body, which is uh, our temple, consists of 46 chromosomes. So we see number 46 symbolizing uh, yeah, the, the building of the temple, the blueprint of the temple. Can you see this? Yeah, but the literal temple didn't take 46 years. Herod's, re Herod's reconstruction, reconstruction took 46 yeah, years. Yeah, the better word. Yeah. We're connected with the 220. It's connected with the 220. <coughs> Which we see in the next uh, example given. The 220 is a symbol for restoration based on this verse. We see John chapter 2, verse 20. So we see 220 there and talks about the restoration of the temple. Right? And there are other examples uh, where it shows the number 220. If you look at the 2300 uh, year prophecy and the 2520 for Judah, the difference between them, they, they both end in 8044, right? Yep. Should I draw it on the board or is it, this is easy stuff, right? But the theme of both is uh, restoration. The 2200 symbolizes the restoration of the temple of the sanctuary, and it, the other 25, or the 2520 for Judah symbolizes the restoration of the host. And the difference between them is exactly 220, 220 years. <coughs> they both end in, uh, on October 22nd, 1844. And October 22nd is uh, the 20th, 22nd day of the 10th month. So you have a 20, 20, uh, 22. Uh, and the 10th month, if you multiply 22 by 10, you have times 10. You have again 2020. Also, the restoration of the sanctuary, the, our, our, yeah, the main pillar of our, our faith, is in verse 8.14 of Daniel, Daniel 8.14. And again, you see the chapter number and first number playing a part in this. If you add them together, you have the number 22. Uh, 20, yeah, 22.
also the 2300 and the 2520 both representing a restoration they both end in 8044 so you, you expect two 2020s how do you say two, yeah two 2020s is that uh, correct two, two, two? Two twenty twenties. Two twenty twos. That's how you. So, so <laughs> English is not my first uh, language, but two twenty twos. One for the twenty two hundred. One for the twenty five twenty. And if you add them together, two two twenty twos. We 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 uh, ignore the zero, right? You're familiar with this. Uh, uh, this technique that we skip zeros, I mean, you can say 1, 2, 6, 0, or 1260 and s s skip, uh, this is, yes, drop. Drop, drop the zero and make 1 to 6 of it. Mm -hmm. You can do the same with the 2520, uh, it's 252. So we do the same with the, the 220. You drop the zero, uh, you get 22, so they are symbolically equal. Right? right. Yes? The first time your document mentions that is Revelation 14, 4. That's the first time you start dropping zeros. Yeah. And you're just doing it because you're going to do this in this whole document and it's acceptable, but you have no rule behind that? Yeah, the Lord shows us that, like in Revelation 14, 4, it's talking about 144,000. Uh, you, you, you just see there, there are no zeros there in verse 14. Verse 4. Verse 4, four, four. so. It indicates already there that we can ignore zeros okay. in, in a sense. Um, that's I want to make that clear. Um, but it looks like this uh, date, October 22nd, 22, is not a coincidental uh, date. It has been carefully picked by the Lord. And also, if you look at the, um, the Day of Atonement, which was the 10th day of the 7th month, on which the 2300 ended in 8044. It was the 10th day of the seventh month. So symbolically, we write uh, it like, like this, 10th day, seventh month. So we have, Ten days, and we have seven months, and a month is how many days? Thirty. Yeah, so symbolically you can combine these numbers, and you end up with uh, 210, and again 10, is 220. Uh, question? Uh, Just a comment on the earlier question about uh, the zero. And I saw it as a, it being a test, and if, if, if 10 is the number of a test, and you divide that number by a 10, that's your test. And it that does take off the zero. Right. So there there is some, you know, that, that could be a test, back to her question, is the zero being just arbitrarily locking it off? I don't think it's arbitrary. I think it does fit. Yeah, you just divide it by ten, you get that. Sometimes we drop off more than one zero, though. Yeah, but again, it's another ten. If you drop it off once, you take ten. That's that's the same number every time. Taking off the zero is taking off the test, which is a ten. And it's also pertaining to the remnant. Correct, the ten percent, the remnant, exactly. So Amen. sorry, that's just yeah. wanted to bring that up. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we see a lot of 22s 
Uh, I just demonstrated. Uh, also, Joseph uh, was thrown in a pit when he was 17 years old and reunited with his father when he was uh, uh, 20, 22 years later. Exactly. When he was restored with his father in, uh, in Egypt. So again, the 22 symbolizing the restoration. Also? Yes. Stem cells have been found to be able to restore 220 different types of cells. Yeah, that's correct. There you go. So we see this in nature also. It's uh, yeah, pretty amazing how uh, the Lord works with numbers. And uh, yeah, it's very uh, profound. And uh, learn a new word. <laughs> profound. Anyway, uh, if you look at the next example, it talks about First Kings 18, verse 1 to 44. And uh, Jeff talked about the seven thunders earlier uh, in the series of these presentations. Uh, Jeff explained a little bit the seven thunders with all the way marks, with all the kings of Judah, uh, symbolizing the Millerite way marks that we see from 1798 to 1844. Uh, I've drawn this out in, in this document. Maybe I should uh, draw it on the board. Up there, it's on the board. Oh yeah, thanks. It's also familiar ground for most of us. Uh, I would draw the seven way marks that we identify, that we have identified over the years in this movement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the, f the first way mark we, we draw is a uh, the time of the end, which started in 1798. Then we see an increase of knowledge. I call it uh, IOK. Uh, this was from 1816 to 1818. Then we have the formalization of the message in 1831. We call this FOM. Then we have the restraining of Islam, 1840. We call it uh, Islam. Then we have the first disappointment on April, well, I call this uh, April 18. Uh, 1843. This was the, the last possible date that Christ could have come back in 1843. This is the first disappointment. Then we have the Midnight Cry of August uh, 15. This is the Midnight Cry. And I've drawn one way, way mark too many. And then we have the Close of Probation, 
1844, October 22. So these are established way marks. And if you look at 1 Kings 18, we see all these way marks symbolically being described in the passages. I don't know if any one of you have done this study of 1 Kings 18? Have seen this study? I have. Jeff has? More than one. Uh, Deborah, uh, have you seen this study before? Yeah, all this all familiar stuff then. Uh, we can go to a few of them that are mentioned here. And we, we will just read the first. Uh, we see... Oh, th maybe we can... Um, how do you say? Make the study available for the people I... I sent it to Larry already. Maybe you can add it to the documents. Okay. For them, for those people that haven't heard about it, and they can look into it. But I'll just give a few examples here. The increase of knowledge from 16, 1816 to 1818. You can read it. Can somebody read First Kings 18? Over the island, Ahab. That one? Mm -hmm. yeah. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, and that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Right. So here we see King Ahab. Uh, who has a question. He wants to know why Israel is suffering this, this drought. So he goes to Elijah with this question. And Elijah answers Ahab, he answers Ahab's question. Uh, and Ahab now knows why Israel was being punished with this drought. So Ahab's knowledge has been <laughs> increased. So uh, symbolizing uh, the increase of knowledge. In the very same verse. In the very same verse in which Miller's uh, paralleling the the years in the Millerite history. So this uh, also uh, uh, not a demonstration of the Lord, the, Lord, the Lord using numbers in His Word. Maybe we can have a second example of this in uh, 1831, the formalization of the message. We can, we can read verse 31. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. Yeah. So this first mention is the moment that God formally and officially gives Jacob the name Israel, which you can read in Genesis 35, 9 to 15. And refers back to the moment that God's covenant with Jacob is being uh, formalized, being expressed by building an altar. We don't have to read Genesis 35, I think. Uh, but the Lord says, Israel shall be thy name, and Jacob set up a pillar, so the whole thing was formalized, right? So this passage is referring to, to formalization, which was the case in 1831. Miller, Miller, Miller formalizing uh, the message. Uh, 1840, we, we, can, we can read verse 40. And the 
Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. Yeah. So in AD 40, uh, Josiah Lich predicted Islam uh, would be restrained. And in this very passage we just read, there was a restraining taking place. This time of the 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 the, the priest the priest of Bill and uh, if you look into the meaning of the word uh, ceased uh, sorry the word take take the prophets it says. The meaning of this word means uh, to restrain. It's from the word Talfas, H H six one zero. Also, the word took and they took them. It's the same word uh, Talfas, which means uh, to seize, uh, to restrain, to catch. But again, this study will be made available for the people that are interested in this. Uh, you, you should finish it off because you're running out of time anyway. You might as well yeah. bring this to a conclusion. Yeah. No, I mean your study. Walk it through the 1844. Ask your question. I have a question about this study. Yeah. It, um, it's like perfectly laid out with Millerite history and Elijah combining together. Is there another one? Do you know that's like this? It does that too? No. Isn't uh, Daniel 11, 40 to 45 that way? Where you have the dates lining up with a history? No. Yeah, that, that was established a long time the ago. The dates? Dates, because he's got yeah. 1816 and 1818. Oh yeah, that's right. That's a long time ago. Yeah, you can oh, go through from 1798 to 1841, 1842, yeah, in Daniel 11. That, yeah. I forgot about that. So that you do have a second testimony that the chapters and verses... Yeah, don't, don't, make me, don't make me explain it right now. <laughs> I wasn't aware of that. Okay, yeah. that's good. Pardon me? I was not aware of that. Yeah, that's that's many that. moons ago. But it's yeah. a second testimony that we can do this in the Bible. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. isn't he laying out his methodology or whatever yeah. for how he's going to prove this date? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, but, but show us 1843 and 1844 because you're about already yeah. the midnight cry, the close of probation. You're about out of time anyway. Yeah, we'll, we'll finish this uh, particular point. Uh, 1843. We see the first disappointment. I read it myself. And said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. So this first mentions, mentions the seven times. Right? Mm -hmm. Symbolizing what? 2020? Which Miller talk would end in the first instance in 1843. Mm -hmm. He expected the return of Christ in the year 1843, but he did not come, right? Mm -hmm. Or like the first says, there is nothing. Which we saw it in the first disappointment of April uh, 19. Uh, the midnight cry. Second remark. I'll read it. And it came to pass at the second time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. So the, the midnight cry was given in, uh, on August, 18, August 15, 1844. Related to the parable of the ten virgins, Matthew 25. And the last part of this passage, Matthew 25, verse 6, 
says, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Which is very similar to this verse I just read. In verse 44, where it says, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand, and he said, Go up. It's a bit more technical, this uh, verse. But the Hebrew word for arise is uh, Allah, and can also mean come, according to the Nash Exhaustive Concordance. The little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand, as we know, is uh, Christ. Sister White says, I read from uh, CET 58.3. Soon our eyes were drawn to the east, for a small black cloud had appeared, about half as large as a man's hand, which we all knew was the sign of the Son of Man. So she mentions also uh, the size of a man's hand, as large of a man's hand, that we just read in verse 44. And Christ, of course, is the bridegroom in Matthew 25. So the cloud, like a man's hand, is Christ, is the bridegroom. Uh, and the word go up, as, as it is mentioned in verse 44, also means, uh, can, can mean uh, to meet, according to the bond drive of Wick's concordance. So if you string it all together, verse 44, you could translate it into the next sentence. It would say, Behold, there cometh the bridegroom, and he said, Go meet, which is very similar to Matthew 25, verse 6. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. But again, this study will be made available, and anyone can, uh, that's interested can look into this in more detail. Uh, then the last passage, talking about the October 22nd. I read the first, verse 44, and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand, and he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. It's the same verse as before, but now we emphasize other words in this verse, like the seventh time, uh, similar like seven, this, how do you say, seven times, of course, the 2520. The little cloud again is uh, Christ. Um, but now a cloud is seen. And which symbolizes Christ. And Sister White writes about this day, October 22nd, that Christ moved to the most holy place to start with the investigative judgment and that he came with the clouds of heaven. Daniel 7.13. Yeah, Daniel 7.13. And... Yeah, showing this, that... Uh, the transition from the holy to the most holy place in 8044, which happened uh, at the last way mark. So uh, we have to leave it at that. Uh, is there any questions uh, for now? First number. Number. First number. Yeah. Number. I went. I went in there and removed them all. Okay. Thank you. And then he Whenever redid it and put them all back in. Oh, it's, okay. it's Dutch. I, mean. yeah, I thought it was Dutch. I didn't get it. I got rid of it. <laughs> it's version 4.8 now. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, uh, thank you. Not do that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Shall you. we close with a uh, prayer? Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this uh, this study. Help us to understand what we have just learned and help us to apply these things 
in our own studies and help us to dig for your hidden treasures. Help us the meaning of all these things and please bless us with the letter rain. Help us to understand what is in front of us so that we are able to prepare for these things. Help us to go through the study in a, in a way that is uh, being able, able for everybody to understand these things, Lord. That, uh, help us to make clear that these things are coming from your hand, that these things are uh, designed by you. And we thank you, Lord, for these, these revelations. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.